Okay, well, welcome to the Commodore Los Angeles Super Show, That's our awesome. surprise speaker, you. And please introduce yourself to the crowd and what you did back in the day. Hi, well, my name is, my name is Ed Trillo. Um, I actually, our, my company has an a office upstairs, a shared uh, workspace. And so I came in this morning just to, you know, catch up on some work, and then I saw this big sign that said Commodore Super Show, and I was like, it can't be my Commodore. And then I saw the two lines by the sea, and I was like, wait a second. So I walked in here and, and asked what was going on, and to my surprise, it was uh, just a Commodore enthusiasts uh, group meeting, right? Um, right. Showing off their latest projects, and, and I suddenly felt nostalgic, and... And, uh, and awesome to like be in this space. Um, so I actually, I started my career um, at Strategic Simulations um, back when I was in college. I was a freshman um, up north. I grew up here in Los Angeles, but you know, I wanted to kind of get away from home for college and uh, went up north to San Francisco and, and I saw a listing in the, in the local newspaper for playtesters at SSI, and I grew up playing gold box game, you know? Mm. Um, first game ever was, I think, Pools of Radiance and, and then Curse of Azure Bonds, and, and when, I, uh, when I applied, my first job was actually playtesting Eye of the Beholder. <laughs> and I remember we used to draw straws to, to see who would test the CGA version that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, if you guys are, uh, or too young, CJ meant like four colors, and it was like <laughs> the worst thing to like to play. Um, but uh, while I was there, I, I just kept schmoozing with the, our art director at the time, and I'd show him my drawings, and and I was an aspiring artist. And and one day they gave me a, a shot, they gave me a chance to to uh, to work on some sprites for the game that was in development at the time, which was Pools of Darkness. And they paid me, I remember they paid me $6 an hour. <laughs> and I couldn't do it at work, I had to do it at home. And I was like, I felt like the luckiest guy alive, you know? And so um, I worked with the very first thing I did was a fire elemental sprite. It was two frame animation. Hmm. He was standing there and then you had one attack frame. <laughs> and and the, way, uh, the way colors worked on the C64, yeah, we had 64 colors, I think, to work with, but you couldn't have more than two colors in an eight by eight, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so that was one of the you know the tricks of the of the trade, and I and I couldn't figure out how to do it, and so um, one of the senior artists there, um, I believe her name was Marilyn. Ugh. I know you're recording me. If she's watching she, this, she's gonna she, kill me. <laughs> it's, it, it's on it's on movie games, right? Under yeah. the credits. Yeah, yeah, the credits yeah. There, movie games. Okay. But she she showed me the the ropes and. Uh, and 16 sprites later, I had my first page of my portfolio. And after that, I, uh, I moved back to LA and worked at uh, Interplay Productions and then to Disney and then and Sony. And, and now I'm here making mobile games. But you know, the Commodore 64 will always have a special place in my heart because of that, that when, I, when I, I visited a friend who had one and, and uh, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what this was. You know, I, I, I had only been uh, exposed to the Atari 2600, <clears throat> and when he showed me um, some of the games that, that were on it, I was just immediately, I went to my parents and begged them to get me <coughs> one, and, and, uh, and that was the end of it. And I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, you know? And, uh, and I would say the game that changed my life was Ultima 4, mm. because, uh, you know, up until then it was just all, you know, shooter games and action games and things like that. And, I didn't know there was a, a game existed where you can actually your character can grow and persist and and go on all these quests and missions and it took me months to finish the game and and in the end I remember getting a, a something where you had to actually mail origin systems and and then I got a <laughs> scroll back signed by Richard Garriott and, <laughs> and I was just I just knew that this is what I wanted to do so yeah. Are you, uh, so, so what is your, 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 what are you currently doing right now upstairs? Um, well, on? I work for a company called Creator Inc. And we actually do uh, merchandise for YouTube creators. Hmm. And they brought me in to kind of head up the, uh, the interactive division because we're going to try and do digital offerings now for our, our creators. And our main client right now is Matt Pat from Game Theory. So we do all his merchandise. 
Um, he's got about 12 million subscribers, and oh. and uh, and we're doing an ARG game for him right now, just as sort of like a, a thank you to all the customers that that purchase merchandise, and they can log into uh, thetheoristgateway.com and go through like this cool digital experience. But um, but we're also we've also got plans to do some some cool casual games for him. But, How long were you with uh, SSI? I was only there for a few months. Okay. Um, after Pools of Darkness, uh, there wasn't a, a project ready to go that I could work on next, and so I kind of, I was homesick at that time. I wanted to move back to LA, and so that's what I did. I have a funny story though. So my one of my best friends, you know, we had this, uh, we had this uh, clan, this <laughs> Z64 clan, a, a hacker clan called One Step Beyond, and uh, and we got, you know, when we. When we got our first modems, we were 300 baht modems, mm -hmm. our first ones. We would um, set up these war dialers overnight, right? <laughs> <laughs> and in the morning we'd have sometimes like two or three credit card numbers oh. on the screen, and we used oh. those to dial into um, to BBSs in Germany <laughs> to, to, to download games, right? Oh. Pirated games, and uh, oh, wow. we were doing this for you know a few months, and and uh, one day we were at school. And two FBI agents showed up to my friend what Paul's house. <laughs> he lived five houses down. Holy cow. And luckily he had this crazy dad, right? He didn't know anything about what we were doing. And the FBI agents said, you know, we're, we're investigating someone using illegal credit card <laughs> transactions and, and stuff. You know, this is, this is like, you know, we still had wired phones back then, you know? Um, and he just he gave them an earful. He was like, what are you doing here? I don't know what you're talking about. You got the wrong place, and he basically ran him out off the <laughs> off the property, and and we were sitting there playing, and and uh, his dad came into the room one day or later that night and said, "Yeah, some FBI guys were here talking some nonsense about about credit cards," and <laughs> we immediately started sweating, and we were like, "What the hell? What's what is that?" And so we called all our friends, and we just deleted everything. Oh, and that was that was the last of that. So, <laughs> but. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure it'd be a lot different today, but I don't think there's any running from the FBI for well, stuff like that. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I mean, there, there, there are other organizations that are, are just as big, like Nintendo. Yeah, so hey, you yeah, heard about, enough. you know about the Super Mario Brothers 64 port that was just released a few days ago. Oh, no, no. I oh, you don't that. know no. about that. We haven't. Oh, yeah, that's sure. right. Yeah. On the CC. On so, the, on the, yeah. Oh, okay. So it, Someone did a very faithful... Version. Yes, oh, wow. uh, the, the, it's probably <laughs> developed off the NES port. Oh wow! So, so okay. they made a, They looked at the NES and they ported it over the Commodore 64. Yeah. But when Nintendo found out about it, they started yeah. shutting down download sites. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot harder to do that stuff these days, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, uh, so when was the last time you had a, a Commodore? When you powered up a Commodore? Uh, an actual one, probably 1993, maybe. Oh, so you don't have any, the equipment anymore? Nah, just, like that? just the emulators you can find okay. online. Emulators. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I think uh, for, I, it was on, I was just on for, uh, Forever C64, I think it was a website, just a few weeks ago, just, just being nostalgic. Sometimes I just love firing up Ultima 4 just to hear the songs, you know? Because yeah. um, the SID chip, like, you know, even the PCs didn't have the same quality of sound as the C64 back then. So, <laughs> yeah. have you ever thought about getting back into like uh, programming for the Commodore 64 or anything like that? Um, Developing sprites or things like that for the Commodore 64? Oh no! I mean, I've got kids now that I have oh, to feed. Yeah, that's so right. <laughs> that's <laughs> Maybe right. one day when I have the time, I'd, I'd love to to join a, a project just to just oh. to do it. You know. Uh, but I love seeing what pe people are doing. I, I, you know, I subscribe to a couple of uh, uh, Twitter users that uh, keep the Commodore 64 alive. And hmm. yeah, are you on Facebook? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm part you of the retro gaming uh, Facebook group. Oh, you know about the C64 128 Facebook group? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do now. They're right there. Okay. <laughs> they have like thousands and thousands of people okay. in that Facebook group there. <laughs> Yeah. And they, they, they talk about all kinds of developments for the, the Commodore 64 oh, and the wow, 128. Okay. 
And of I'll course, they also have Amiga Facebook groups also. If you yeah. want to be part of the Amiga group yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah, it was later I moved on to the Amiga, Amiga oh. 5000, uh, 500, and, and I think I had 1000 also. It, it's hard to remember, but um, what really launched my career was on the Amiga, I remember getting a pirated version of Imagine 3D. It was the first 3D, mm -hmm. one of the first 3D software. Right. I mean, I just couldn't afford anything back mm -hmm. then, so. And we all hacked, right, everyone? Okay. <laughs> we all pirated? Okay. And I paid, I paid someone, tw <laughs> I paid someone $20 for a photocopied version, uh, a copy of the instruction manual. <laughs> and I learned on my own, and the uh, first thing I ever created was this crystal ball Oh, yeah. with reflections and a, right. on a grid and had my face somewhere in oh, there. Wow, there you go. <laughs> and I had that in my portfolio and I look back at it now like, okay, a chrome ball with my face as a reflection <laughs> is part of my portfolio. But uh, that helped me get into Disney and oh. I was the first 3D artist actually hired at Disney Interactive. And we worked on uh, gargoyles at the time for Super Nintendo and, and Sega Genesis. And, yeah. And so it, it was great because it was the first time, you know, they had just built that uh, division of the company hmm. and it was very experimental. Everyone, almost everyone was straight out of CalArts or Pasadena Art hmm. Center. So they were all traditionally trained um, illustrators and animators and I was the only guy using 3D. Mm -hmm. And so I learned from, you know, these animators how to animate and, and it was like, it was like boot camp. It was like going to oh, school, you know, just right there on the job. So it was an awesome experience. And fun fact, like right after that, we, um, uh, a good friend of mine who was a producer at the time started a new company called Mission Control, and they were making games for uh, DreamWorks when they had just started. And so about eight of us went over to that new company. Um, his name was Michael Giacchino. Um, and I don't know if you, you might recognize the name. He's actually won a couple of Oscars for music. He wrote the music for Up. Um, he did the music for so many movies. Uh, he's won two Oscars for, for Pixar movies. Um, and so, you know, that, that, it, was a, it was a great time. We, we were only there for about maybe a year, year and a half, and then we shut the company down. We just, uh, we couldn't get any, any new projects. And everyone on that team went over to Pixar. <laughs> and I was the one who only went, I was the only one who wanted to stay in games. So they went on to movies. And, Video games were my passion, so I stayed. And, and, uh, and actually, I, I lied because one one of the, our producer there, Scott Langto, went on to EA, and he was part of the team that broke away from EA and, and created Medal of Honor, so uh, and Spark uh, Spark Entertainment. So that's it. It's my old my old history. There. <laughs> <laughs> so it, w when you talk about portfolio. You're showing your 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 prospective uh, employers uh, what files or pictures or printed out printed out material no, or I animations mean, or what are you? It was very about? hard to print stuff back then. Okay, you know, like uh, color prints. I think it was like ten dollars a page. So my interview at Disney Interactive in 1995, I brought my entire computer. <laughs> <laughs> I lug it around, attach it to a monitor, and I showed them you know all the stuff. So you were yeah. showing your your animations or yeah. your, 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 your digital <laughs> images that you had uh, your, yeah. uh, of, of what, a Commodore 64? Or, yeah, the or sprites Amidas. I did. Oh, wow. The sprites I did for the Commodore 64. And, you know, I, I, I worked at Interplay for uh -huh. about a year and a half, and we worked on Sim Ant 3D and Out oh. of This World. <laughs> um, and so I had that in my portfolio as well. Uh, <laughs> they never released Sim Ant, but, you know, uh, but they had a pretty a nice budget for that. We had a, a scientist who was uh, consulting on that project. He was an actual entomologist who had written books <laughs> on insects. And we, we're still friends today. His name is Steve Buckman. He's, um, he was involved in, uh, in Wings of something. Disney released a, a documentary on butterflies and pollination. Wings of Life, I think, Wings of Beauty. Um, and he was a chief scientist on there. And we've actually been trying to, to work on a a, a butterfly type either app or game for a long time. We're still talking about it, but, uh, but yeah, we met, you know, working on Simat for the 
the C64 and PC back then. Wow. Yeah. So you have these, what, images or files that were never released for the Commodore or the Amiga? Um, well, the, the, the stuff I did for SSI were released. Okay, um, yeah. And, man, I, you know, a lot of those... A lot of those old images and, and animations are, are on an actual, what the heck is it called? It was a, uh, you might, you guys might remember, it was a, an external hard drive you can have for your PC and it had this huge cartridge that was 100 megabytes. A zip, a zip, a zip, a zip drive. Zip drive? I still have the yeah, zip drive. Yeah, we have, yeah. <laughs> we have, we have, we can access zip, zip really? okay. cartridges. <laughs> yeah, I have to dig into the attic, yeah, but it, I, I, I mean, never If we have to, if we have to, yeah, I mean, I mean, these things should not be kept hidden. I mean, yeah. if you wanted to post things up on, <laughs> onto the net, we go, look at this, look at this from back in the day. Yeah. This is from this incomplete game or whatever, you know, or a sprite from here, or, you yeah. know, just okay. odds and ends that people would be interested in. I'm going to find that as a driver and hopefully, you know. Oh, very good. Very good. Hopefully I kept it in yes. something where not too, many, not too much dust has collected. <laughs> it's still operating. So, yeah, that'd be great. You guys have any questions? Yeah, you guys have any like questions for Ed here? <laughs> Anything like that? Ed, uh, you know, Ed, any other, any questions? What was your favorite Commodore 64 game? <laughs> favorite Commodore? Okay, I'm a terrible adventure gamer, like so <laughs> I have no patience to go through I I adventure games. So my favorite games were always like, you know, the, the shoot em ups, the, uh, okay. like, like the flying games where you're, uh, where air, Things are flying at, at you. There was no 3D back then. <laughs> yeah. So you see these little dots coming at you. Going, oh, that's supposed to be an airplane coming at me. Yeah. Shoot it. <laughs> yeah, I like Marvel Madness. Marvel Madness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep playing, every time I play a game, I think it should be ported to like the iPhone. To yeah. yeah, it should. <laughs> yeah. I said, this would be a little trivia. Yeah. Yeah. This is perfect. <laughs> the style of gameplay works so perfectly. Yeah. Oh, another world on Amiga. Another world. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like platformers. Like I was just actually playing James Pond back there. James Pond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we uh, there used to be a month every every couple of months in in the LA area. Um, we used to hold this thing called the Duck Meet. Uh -huh. So the Duck Pond was a was a was a big Commodore sixty four. Uh, what did they call it? Just a, it wasn't a website, what were they called back then? A user, BBS, a BBS sorry, BBS. 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 BBS, yeah, and the guy who ran the duck pond had these duck meets, and so we would meet and everyone would just bring their machines and we'd, you know, trade games and, and there was this guy um, who came in from Santa Barbara and he would have this van load of just Tons of floppies that we could you know, <laughs> copy from, but, but yes. for every every game you wanted to copy, you had to give him a blank, a right. blank disc. So it was fair trade. <laughs> a copy party. Yeah. Right. Uh, Mark, our, our CBM guy here, he had a, a side story to talk about. And Mark, what did you do? You mentioned about porting this game. So at the Amiga 30 event, there mm -hmm. were a lot of like. You know, Commodore, Amiga, historical figures wandering around there. Yeah. One was Jim Sachs, who was like an incredible artist. Oh, Jim, Jim Sachs. Jim Sachs. Yeah. He drew stuff at 320 by 200 that looked yeah. like a photo. Yeah. It's just 32 colors. Yeah. And he would just he drew them one pixel at a time. Um, yeah. And he was looking at, he was playing Defender of the Crown, which is kind of oh, weird. Yeah. You know, him playing his own game. Yeah. And then another guy walked up next to him, and I'm trying to remember what his name was, but he, he was the, the game designer from Activision who did like Pitfall. Oh wow! That oh, guy. David Crane. David yeah, Crane. David Crane. Uh -huh. And he's like, we should get together and take some of our old stuff and port it to the iPhone. Oh <laughs> like I'm like, yeah, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'll play that. That's amazing. Yeah. Brings back so many good memories. Yeah. You know, I, when we I was reading Ready Player One, it just it just <laughs> brought me back to yeah. those days when you know it was so mysterious, right? Like everything, you know, was was brand new. Every new game and, and every time you get inside of a game and 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 hack you know that all the hex values to on your save game and <laughs> it was just so it was so new you know and it was the wild wild west and now everything is youtubeable and mm. and if you pay a subscription you can you can have all the cheats that you want it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's
it's a, it's a little too easy. Wow. Back then, it was so. And you had to network through people. Yeah. And, and yeah. See what they're doing, and then, yeah. yeah. I'm sad my kids won't have that experience, you know? Get to... Why not? You could bring them to the Commodore LA Super Show yeah. <laughs> and show them what it's like. Or even downtown make, LA Maker Fair, yeah. which is happening in December. Yeah. There you go. I mean, they can do that. But, you know, everything is just at the palm of their hands now on their phones. And I feel like they're just so spoiled. But, you know, it's cool. You can't stop, uh, you can't stop progress like that. But, I mean, it's been, it's been amazing to see to see it kind of get to this point, you know, from those from those first days, and and, uh, and seeing that blinking cursor, you know, <laughs> on the blue screen. Well, we're having trouble getting some of the blinking cursors <laughs> going around here. <laughs> A little yeah. bit of trouble there on some of the machines. Yeah. Wow, oh, this is great. Anybody have primarily doing visual design? Probably? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a creative director. Gotcha. Uh, so. Yeah. Anybody have any other questions here for Ed? What uh, drawing tools did you use back then? Box paint or other stuff? Uh, digital. It was oh, no, digital it was, paint. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, D A D paint. D paint. Um, there you go. I forget what it was called on the C six four. Was it D paint? On oh, the C six four, there was no D paint yeah, on the C six four. Koala paint. Koala. There you yeah. go. Oh, there koala. you go. <laughs> we have a koala paint. We have a good old koala pad over there. If you want. <laughs> did you design things on the koala pad? No, no. Actually, I actually um, uh, painted all those sprites on my Amiga. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. You did, you, you did it on the Amiga and then you had to port it down to the C64. Yeah, and so we uh, lost a lot of the, the detail that I made. And that, that's where I was, that's when I that was the learning curve there. And okay. so. <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. other questions, guys? Okay, well, thank you, Ed. Very good. Yeah, thank thank you. you, guys. Thank you.